Welcome back. Hard to think of a club that had a busier transfer window than Arsenal. Pierre Emerick Obama Yang deal getting done for close to 56 million pounds. So Obama Yang and Mictarian in, Walcott, Sanchez, Giroud, Catalan out. On the whole, Gab, how do we rate this window for Arsenal? I think numbers wise, it's it's very good. They're not far off netting out. I think the Giroud fee might actually when all said and done be a little bit higher than that. And obviously Sanchez is going to be worth zero in, in the summer. Now at least he's worth a, a, a Mkhitaryan for you. What I'm not sure is Alba Mayang, you know, w what what the planning is. Alba Mayang, Lacazette, Mkhitaryan. You look at that they're all in, in, in their late 20s. You re-signed out. So if those things coming together, we're going to need some answers for it. All right, uh, so they made a couple bucks. Uh, how much better are they actually? Uh, look, ma making a couple of bucks is what Arsenal seem to do every single transfer window. I don't think that's moved the club forward. Surely not in comparison to, to anybody else. Now, you asked me this exact question a week ago, Seb, I would have told you, I, I think Arsenal made all great in this transfer window. Uh, Obama Yang coming in, McTarion coming in in midfield. I like that a lot. But then you go and you see the performance that, that they, they give you in midweek, and you realise a lot of the issues that have plagued Arsenal before are still there and coming back to haunt them. And you're not quite sure if Obama Yang's goals makes up for the deficiencies you see in midfield and, and in the back. I think Arsenal fans would just despair now, or well, the majority of them, about whether they made any money on transfers or not. It's purely down to quality they want to get in now. I quite like the Obama Yang deal. Uh, potentially exciting. Gab's talked about the, there, are, there are some issues there. I think if Mkhitaryan had come in directly from Dortmund, it might have opened a few more eyes to say, well, this could be exciting, but there's a little concern because of the form that he had, albeit he had a turbulent time at Man United with Mourinho, but he comes into it off the back of a poor spell from United. But all in all, when you're losing a player like Sanchez and you know you're losing, I don't think it's a bad transfer window for them. But as Shaq said, off the back of a pasting by Swansea, it's hard to paint a good picture on it. Uh, Mesut also also signs yeah. a contract extension mm. today. When you look at that front four, how does it all fit together? Well, see, that's good for the club in terms of they're not going to lose Ozil for nothing. They're obviously paying them a big a load of money. But I, I think it's a sign from Ozil, in my opinion, that there, were, there are other suitors out there for him, that he was happy to sign at Arsenal, a club who, in my opinion, aren't really going anywhere in terms of challenging for the league or the Champions League and haven't been for a while. How do these pieces fit together, Shaka? I'm, I'm, I'm not quite sure, and I think that's what everybody's looking at Arsene Wenger and trying to figure out now. On the one hand, as much as I like the sign of Obama Yang, whether you play him, Lacazette, Mkhitaryan and Ozil up front and just ask everybody else to defend, maybe that's uh, in, in what Arsene Wenger is thinking going forward. But you've got... You try struggling to find who are the leaders defensively for Arsenal. Who is it? Who is the person or persons that are going to keep things together? And I'm not sure that they have that. They have that personality on the park. Whether uh, as well that this is a team built to just play in, in two separate types of lines that way. Again, I, I'm not sure. And I'm just waiting to see. But I think one of the pods that we mentioned before. <laughs> Some of the, and I always talk about like sort of net spend and selling well. Um, I thought they sold Walcott well and they sold, they sold Coughlin very well. Um, I think where it matters is you now have more resources in the summer, in the, in the summer window, if you do want to strengthen For the back line. For a club that doesn't want to spend. That's what more been resources? the story. That, but see, but that's been the story of Arsenal until now. We could all make jokes as long as Wenger's there and Kroenke's there, it's going to be like this. They brought in this guy, Sven Mislinstat, presumably. They didn't just say, hey, Sven, come here, be our head of recruitment just so we can break even all the, sign, all the time and sell our, our best players. You have to have some level of faith in him that in the summer they're already planning on, on strengthening the areas that need strengthening. The, the, the challenge for Arsenal, though, and, and which Manchester United faced, is the longer you're out of the Champions League, the tougher it is to, to get the types of talents that, that they need. Whether they have the money or not, whether they're willing to spend it or not, I'm still waiting to find out. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for live streaming and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+.